to wireless communication codes. In this lecture, I'm talking about uh, wireless channel. Uh, when we have a signal to transmit from a transmitter uh, over the air, uh, we deal with a uh, channel called wireless. There is no any wire in between the transmitter and the receiver. So we are uh, in the situation that uh, the signal is uh, subject to some variations and affected by the environment. So uh, to have a very good understanding of what's going on in the air and the, the way that the signal is transmitting uh, over this distance, uh, we should have a model. So uh, here we uh, have uh, different uh, types of models, from physical modeling to input-output modeling, statistical uh, modeling, uh, and uh, also uh, maybe uh, some uh, kind of uh, signal processing uh, techniques that uh, use for uh, describing the channel. So in this lecture, first I talk about uh, physical modeling, uh, which consists of uh, uh, some assumptions uh, about electromagnetic waves, as we know that when the signal is transmitted over the air, it's transmitted um, by electromagnetic wave. And then uh, we have considered different scenarios, such as uh, uh, fixed uh, antenna, transmitting antenna, and receiving antenna, uh, fixed transmitting antenna, but moving and receiving antenna. And uh, also, we consider both uh, moving antennas so that we have all both uh, are moving. So, um, and then we talk about the uh, input output model, which is another type of modeling, channel modeling. Uh, here we uh, don't uh, uh, focus on the physical uh, parameters of the channel. We just uh, consider the relationship between the output of the input and we assume that input is the, uh, the receiver, the transmitter is the uh, input, is an input to the channel and the received signal is the output of channel, so that the relationship between these two is the channel. And then we have considered another topic of channel modeling, which is about uh, uh, statistical modeling. Uh, since the variations uh, in, on the, uh, the sky uh, is uh, time bounded and it uh, varies over time and frequency, so it cannot be determined by some uh, uh, very uh, some deterministic uh, process or deterministic functions. So here we consider uh, some probabilistic model to describe the channel. Let's start with the uh, uh, first scenario of channel modeling, uh, which is uh, physical modeling. Uh, in this scenario, the uh, antenna radiates uh, electromagnetic waves and the signal uh, is carried through the uh, air by electromagnetic waves. Uh, we know that the uh, electromagnetic waves uh, consist of two kinds of waves, electric and magnetic uh, waves that are, uh, they are perpendicular to each other. And also, they are uh, perpendicular to the direction of the radiation. Uh, so now, uh, assume that uh, uh, here we have an antenna at point zero, and we place the receiving antenna at uh, point uh, U. Uh, let's uh, write down uh, and describe the channel. We have uh, free space. So uh, the signal is in terms of time is a sinusoid like cosine of two pi f c t and uh, and the signal carries uh, on the 
case, and now we just assume that we have, uh, we just consider a military field, uh, which is the function of, you know, frequency, time, and the location of the receiving uh, uh, antenna, uh, which is the function of R, data, and sign. And this can be taken as a, a, a function present in the antenna pattern, uh, like alpha is sending. Uh, this uh, denotes the sending antenna, uh, which is again in terms of the function of theta side and uh, frequency. By cosine to pi, f t minus r over c, which is the delay at the, that point, and of course over pi. Uh, here, theta and psi represents two angles, horizontal and vertical uh, angles uh, between the uh, antenna and the uh, so, uh, this is the uh, radiation, the electric field, um, at the point U, uh, like, uh, yeah, let's uh, define U as a function of uh, R, um, data, and Uh, so, uh, if we receive an uh, antenna, we may have similar um, expressions for uh, the receiving waveform. Uh, here, for simplicity, we just uh, see the right uh, U. And the, the only difference is this parameter, which uh, represents, uh, which uh, accounts for both antenna. So here, alpha is the product of the antenna patterns, both antenna patterns, transmitting and receiving antennas. So again, it is a function of angles and frequency, cosine um, to pi and t minus r over c. So uh, here, yeah, we have R. Okay, this is the first scenario, and we move to the next section that is about free space moving antenna. Uh, yeah, here, okay, probably there. Uh, this is in general. This is the um, signal. This is not the one strand frequency. The signal consists. Uh, uh, all the frequencies, okay? So, we just correct this. Uh, okay, the next scenario is uh, about free space movement. So here we have this space and moving antennas. In this case, uh, we define a location, a moving location, that uh, is about uh, moving. And uh, the location of U, since it moves, uh, it, has a, uh, it is in terms of time, so that it has R of T. So, so we assume that the, the direction of uh, velocity is only the direction of the um, uh, distance between uh, transmitting and receiving uh, antenna. So, uh, and R of T is, uh, is an initial um, point, initial location plus V. 
T, that is the uh, displacement of the antenna, uh, which is a function of the velocity and time. So in this case, we rewrite uh, all of the equations that we had before uh, for the Transmitting uh, field, we have the E of L, T, and instead of R, we should write R0 plus VT, and the uh, same thing for A prime psi, uh, which is equal to um, R by S, the same as before, theta psi. F and uh, again cosine two p uh, pi uh, f and uh, t we have in a new term is the same as before v t over c because here we uh, have a shift uh, due to the uh, velocity. So uh, we can rewrite the, this term as uh, f t minus r zero over c v t over c uh, like f uh, one minus v over c is uh, like this, and this term. Is called a um, Doppler shift. So F here is translated into another frequency value that is F divided by 1 minus V over C representing the Doppler shift. Um, so if we um, plug in this expression into the received uh, waveform, This, uh, yeah, sorry, here I just want R. Uh, so exactly the same as the delta now, therefore, exactly the same as the one, just uh, we replace all the with alpha, which is um, a new term uh, consisting of the antenna patterns for both uh, transmitting and receiving This one will be the electric field at the receive pattern. The next scenario of wireless channel for physical modeling is the case that we have a wall uh, so that the uh, transmitted signal hits the wall and reflected back to the receive antenna. So we have a case like this uh, so that we have. This antenna radiates a uh, signal, um, and we have a wall. And assume that this wall is big uh, relative to the distance of the um, transit antenna to this point, um, and the distance is d. And now we put the um, receive antenna somewhere here at the distance of R. Uh, another assumption is that uh, 
we have the, uh, some effects uh, by this antenna on the uh, transmitted wave. Uh, so uh, here we assume that this uh, antenna uh, has no any negative impact on the wave, uh, so that the uh, main uh, result that we want to get from this assumption is that the uh, received uh, wave uh, at the class receive uh, antenna is the summation of the direct path uh, wave and the reflected uh, wave. That is uh, uh, electric uh, field, uh, which is uh, the, time, uh, the function of uh, frequency and time, can be expressed by summation of two terms. One is the uh, direct one which goes from the transit antenna to the receive antenna uh, as we have before um, like alpha cosine of 2 um, pi ft minus rc this is the first term for the uh, drag path and the second which is about the Reflected wave, um, again the same pattern, the same equation, uh, except that the distance will be changed uh, from uh, r to uh, uh, 2d minus r. So that is uh, 2d minus r over. Uh, 2d minus r because the distance from uh, this um, and this and this totally will be 2d minus r. So here uh, we have a, a phase difference between the, uh, these two waves, uh, that is the difference between uh, the phase of this signal and this signal. Uh, we can write it as Delta T, um, which is uh, uh, no for the first one, uh, it is uh, like uh, so we, we have two terms. Uh, this term is for the first one, uh, which is uh, about uh, two pi f r over c. This is the phase of this first. Uh, the, the first one that is for direct path and the second one um, which is the phase of the reflected uh, wave uh, the only difference is that um, the distance will be 2d minus r instead of r so will be 2d minus r over c one thing that is uh, uh, here uh, should be noted is that here, um, since the signal uh, in the uh, reflected way uh, has a negative sign because the, uh, the signal then goes from this direction to this direction, uh, it changed the, uh, it, uh, it has a uh, Phase different of pi, so this should be added here. So this one pi is for this one, the first one. Uh, so if we simplify for this term, it will be uh, this one and this one will be four pi f over c d minus r. For uh, this term, uh, and also R. If we consider this, uh, we can uh, get us only uh, minus R, right? Can also be. So, here, one uh, point I want to mention is that if this uh, phase difference is uh, 
an um, even, mod, even integer multiple of pi, then these two waveforms are added constructively. And if this uh, uh, phase difference is an odd integer number multiple of um, pi, then the waveform is uh, unconstructively added. So when they are added to each other, they uh, will be stronger, and when they are uh, added unconstructively uh, with the different phase of um, uh, like pi, 3 pi, or 5 pi, any um, odd numbers of pi, and then uh, uh, the signal will be weak and it produce some in the lag. Um, so um, uh, this um, translates this phenomenon translates into a spatial pattern of uh, uh, constructive and unconstructive interference of the wave. And another term uh, we find here is uh, um, coherence distance. The coherence distance is the distance that. Uh, uh, a waveform um, takes from uh, change from a peak to a value uh, that is equivalent to uh, uh, 5 over 4 or lambda over 4. If we um, the um, lambda represents the uh, wavelengths of the wave, then uh, the uh, coherence distance is defined uh, as this, uh, noted by this, the delta xc is equal to a quarter of the wavelengths. So this is the coherence uh, distance. And uh, another term that we define here is uh, delay speed. Delay speed is a term that relates to the um, this uh, phase difference. Uh, uh, if we uh, look at the time delay between these two, the, the, the difference between the delay of this um, wave and the reflected wave, then the delay between these will be um, the longer uh, waveform. Um, this is the time delay for the reflected one, and this one is for the direct one. So the difference between these two delay uh, is defined as. Delay spread. So, this is another term that we find uh, here. And also, another term that is related to this is the coherence bandwidth. Um, as I said, um, when uh, frequency, uh, when uh, we had uh, goes from a peak to uh, the valley, uh, and the signals change uh, constructively or unconstructively. So it depends not only uh, uh, on uh, by changing the distance, but also, as we see here, it changes by frequency. So when frequency changes in terms of multiplications of this um, delay, then the signal uh, significantly change from a uh, constructively interfering pattern to unconstructively uh, pattern. So here we find the um, V, okay, like uh, the, this one corresponding to this um, delay spring, um, that is the coherence pattern when it is a number, an order of uh, T, D. So that when 
this the frequency, when the frequency changed in order of the inverse of time split, delay split. Um, okay, this one here is the uh, errors. Errors um, this one second. So some units should have uh, units be there. And now we uh, uh, can uh, move on to the next scenario as uh, we are talking about the physical channel of different uh, uh, situations. Uh, until now, I covered uh, three cases. Uh, first was from the uh, uh, antenna, this antenna uh, in free space. The second one was uh, this antenna or booking antenna on the receiver, uh, the still free space. And uh, now, uh, free space, uh, sorry, reflecting wall, not free space, reflecting wall. Uh, but this antenna, uh, now we have, uh, we are going to talk about the next video that is the uh, reflecting wall in moving. The next scenario is a reflecting wall and moving antenna. So here we have again uh, the reflecting wall and then the uh, receiving antenna is moving. And we assume that the moving speed is uh, B so that the antenna has a velocity of B. And, uh, The initial distance is R0, like before. Um, so here the only difference is that uh, uh, the uh, actual distance between the um, transmit antenna and receive antenna is R, um, that is uh, R0 plus B. So at the moment of T, the um, real uh, location of antenna will be this, R0 plus BT. So everything, everything that we had before with the previous equation should be written again here, except that we replace R by R0 plus BT. Um, okay, uh, before uh, moving forward, I want to uh, make an equation. Uh, and that uh, equation, uh, I said that the uh, waves direct wave and the reflected wave is added uh, to each other, of course, they are added. Uh, but uh, one thing that I didn't um, notice in that equation is that when the reflected signal is added to the uh, direct signal, uh, we have a negative sign there because the reflected path has a toy uh, phase difference with the um, direct path. So therefore, in that equation, we should have the uh, subtraction of two terms. Uh, so uh, I uh, care about this now, as I want to rewrite everything um, uh, as I expressed before. So here, um, again, we have uh, uh, the two new strain, uh, strength uh, is uh, Summation for some slash of two terms. One is for uh, direct path and one is for the uh, reflected path. So for the first one, as we had before in the numerator, R, uh, now we have R0 plus BT. And uh, the numerator is the same except that uh, uh, we should replace R by R0 plus BT. If we do this, uh, uh, we can get some uh, uh, expression like this. That is uh, uh, two point uh, f uh, one minus b over c uh, t uh, minus r zero over c. That is, oh, let's say over the one. And the uh, second term should be minus uh, R0 uh, 2D 
because here the velocity, the direction of the uh, wave comes from here, so that the uh, direction will be changed. So that uh, d is for this direction, minus b is for that direction. So here, this will be opposite of these first.
very uh, low, that is, goes to zero as R increases, uh, then these two waves uh, these cancel out each other. Because the uh, uh, reflected one has a negative sum, so therefore by adding up the two uh, waves in the different phase of the pond, they're going to start cancelling out. So one interesting thing to happen here as R is uh, very large and uh, it's large enough, like uh, very larger than uh, frequency over the velocity of C, then uh, the uh, strength of the electric field is proportional uh, to the uh, inverse of R squared. That is, uh, instead of the one over R, uh, it is uh, changed to one over, over R2. This is going to happen in uh, this area, the area that the um, distance between the antennas is uh, very large in the rural area, and also the assumption of this distance is much, much greater than the frequency of the waveform um, over C. The last scenario uh, for wireless uh, communication channels uh, for uh, physical models uh, assume that we have some obstacle uh, in between um, transmit signal, uh, transmit antenna and receive antenna. In this case, those free space modeling, uh, based modeling, are not working. Uh, in, in those modeling, we uh, assume that the signal, um, the wave goes in direction wave, in direct wave, or that the reflected one is added up to the direct path. Uh, as we use the um, ray tracing method, uh, it, it was easy to uh, analyze and uh, solve the um, situation, uh, solve the problems of the um, transmitted power. But when we have some obstacle in between, uh, the obstacle absorbs some part of the power and scatters some other parts, so therefore um, the receive signal cannot be assumed as in the summation of the uh, direct and the um, reflected path. Uh, in this case, uh, the deterministic model does not work and uh, we should use uh, some probabilistic model. Numerical um, results, empirical, uh, empirical results and uh, uh, measurements show that the decay of the uh, power is not going to um, happen like the uh, ones that we had before and the, uh, the rate of decay is the, not like the, uh, the previous one model, uh, 1 over R or 1 over R2. And uh, here is, it has different numbers. So those um, uh, numerical uh, analytical models uh, are not uh, uh, helpful here. And uh, now we should find some uh, probabilistic uh, models uh, to describe the channel. Uh, here we have a, a phenomenon uh, called shadowing. Uh, shadowing is like a, a cloud in the sky that prevents um, light to shine on the ground. Uh, and uh, of course we, we see here that some parts of the light is uh, absorbed, some parts is uh, uh, scattered um, and of course reflected. Um, and the, the main interesting thing is here that the uh, decay of power in the uh, cellular network um, as it happens in um, uh, urban areas, um, the uh, decay is related to the uh, coverage of the cell. Uh, we know that if the distance is going uh, larger and we uh, uh, go from um, uh, 
the base station, for example, or the mobile uh, phone, uh, the uh, decay uh, should be not much uh, such that the receive, uh, signal cannot be detected. So for reliable communication, uh, uh, the received power uh, has to meet uh, uh, a minimum level of power. So of course, uh, it is not only the factor to determine the, uh, 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 the area of coverage in a cell. There are other things like uh, the density of the obstacles uh, and the nature of the obstacles uh, in that uh, area. So considering all of these things, you can find the uh, coverage area and the uh, radius of the uh, a cellular network or a reliable communication. Um, also, another point that, uh, uh, that is uh, very interesting to mention is that um, decay of power is good for uh, avoiding interference between two adjacent um, um, cells. So, if uh, we have decay, it means that the uh, one channel one channel cannot interfere with the others because the power goes to zero at uh, some distance. Okay, here we finish up uh, the first uh, uh, part of this uh, uh, lecture uh, that is about that was about the uh, physical modeling. Uh, from now on, I uh, talk about uh, another approach that is about uh, input-output modeling and. Uh, have the different uh, scenario here, all of those uh, models that I said before, uh, we um, uh, talked about, uh, talk, uh, we consider uh, a new model, uh, so that is totally different than those um, race racing 